Hey you, my name is Emily, the Drone Angel, and welcome to your one-stop shop for everything drone related. Today I'm gonna to talk about the remote pilot ID, what it means for you as a drone pilot, the industry response, the concerns of the drone community, and DJI is a new solution for this network-based service that's affecting the whole drone world. So let's get started. On December 26, 2019, the Federal Aviation Administration, also known as the FAA, proposed rules for the remote identification of drones. When the FAA shared this rule, they issued an NPRM, or Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, for the remote ID. What is an NPRM? This notice is required by law when an independent agency like the FAA wants to alter, change, or remove a rule or regulation. When it's issued, the U.S. public has a certain amount of time to share their thoughts and opinions about the rule. In this case, pilots have until March 2nd to share their opinions and thoughts before comments will be closed, submitted, and then considered when they are finalizing the rule. The summary of the rule is the ability to identify and locate UAS operating in the airspace of the United States provides additional situational awareness to manned and unmanned aircraft. This will become even more important as the number of UAS operations in all classes of airspace increase. The FAA expects all drones to be compliant to the rules by three years after its effective date. According to the FAA, there are three parts to the rule that are being developed at the same time. The first is the rule itself, setting requirements for UAS operators and production standards for drone producers. The second is a network of UAS suppliers, which would collect drone identification and locations in real time under the contract of the FAA. The third part is a collection of technical requirements that organizations will develop to meet the design and production requirements under the rule. All drones have to abide by these rules. Except for home-built systems, drones operated by the U.S. government, and unmanned aircrafts weighing less than 0.55 pounds, like the new Mavic Mini. There are three categories of remote ID. The standard remote ID is the top category and it allows pilots to operate normal operations under the Part 107. A drone needs to be able to broadcast its identification and location and simultaneously send that information to a UAS service supplier. The supplier then sends that information to a stakeholder. The limited remote ID is for those without a reliable internet connection. Pilots can operate on a limited basis, meaning the drone has to send its identification and location via the internet with no broadcast requirements, but they can only fly it within 400 feet of where they stand. So the pilot always has to have visual line of sight of the drone. The third one is FRIA, or FAA Recognized Identification Area. This one is for recreational pilots. They can only fly in certain areas and they are limited to fly only within 400 feet of their control station. Remote ID refers to the ability to identify a drone using a signal that transmits a unique ID identifier. The idea is with information being transmitted from a UAS to the FAA, law enforcement, and the public. This allows people to find out information about a UAS flying near them. Direct responses from the top drone manufacturers have been kind of few and far, but there has been plenty of chatter within their online community. DJI is one of the few top drone producers to really voice their opinion about this, which makes sense since they worked with ASTM International to create the remote ID concept and set standards for their drone pilots using their products. On February 17th, DJI shared an alternative solution to the remote ID broadcast network in order to comply to the requirements of the FAA's remote ID. DJI believes the network ID has its advantages for complex operations like drone deliveries or long flights, but it doesn't make sense for the average user, especially when we have to pay a monthly subscription. In this video, DJI provides a couple reasons why they are implementing this new alternative solution. They start off by explaining that strangers see a drone in the air and they want to know why it's there. What's their solution for this important issue? Their drone to phone remote identification. Regulators have made clear that they need a more reliable remote ID system as more drones enter the sky. Remote ID is coming and we have to make sure to get it right. We need accountability for our pilots without heavy restrictions. That's what DJI's drone to phone solution does. According to them, they say it's like having a license plate. This helps provide safety, security, and accountability for drones and the people that fly them. 
by letting authorities and curious people have access to this information. This means accountability becomes the rule rather than restriction. Hmm. DJI's drone to phone uses an industry standard Wi-Fi radio signal that can be received by a smartphone. They have collaborated with the Wi-Fi Alliance. The Wi-Fi Alliance is providing a cost-free solution for drone remote ID. With just a firmware update, you can set this up. In this video, the VP of Policy and Legal Affairs at DGI states that the service will work in the mountains where there is no connectivity as well. With DJI's drone to phone app, anyone can identify a drone in real time using their smartphone. You can see the flight path of the drone, the location of the pilot, and the ID for the drone. Unlike the drone manufacturers, the drone community has been voicing their opinion about the remote ID at an alarming rate on websites and in discussion forums. I've seen some positive responses, especially from drone application producers like AirMap. AirMap Chairman Ben Marcus tweeted, The proposed remote ID rule validates a core belief we hold that the only way drones can operate and scale is if they all participate in a connected, internet-enabled UTM system. However, there have been a substantial amount of negative responses about this new ruling. Whether you're FPV, RC, or fixed wing pilot, it doesn't matter. The drone community has come together, united, to share their feedback. They aren't too happy. And it's obvious in the nearly 20,000 comments made on the FAA's NPRM. Many influential groups have raised alarms about disclosing information about pilots in real time to the public. There's also fear of unforeseen costs and the likelihood that recreational pilots will be unmotivated to comply to these rules. The Drone Pilot Ground School, also known as the UAV Coach, is widely known for their hands-on drone training classes nationwide. They believe the remote ID is a necessity for the growth of the industry. However, they disagree with some of the requirements found in the NPRM. They have provided four talking points that you should consider when sharing your comments in the NPRM. One that stood out for me was about compliance. They start by sharing the role regarding compliance and highlight how the NPRM primarily focuses on compliance from a manufacturing perspective. According to them, the FAA hasn't included any proposals in the rule that might incentivize compliance, such as incentives that would allow for special types of flying or other financial incentives. It seems unlikely that most recreational drone pilots will be motivated to comply, especially ones that aren't flying consistently. The FPV Freedom Coalition, or FPVFC, shared a similar view about compliance. As recreational operators are the future pilots, software programmers, engineers, astronauts, explorers, and entrepreneurs, restricting amateur-built drones as well as restricting hobbyist flight of unmanned aerial systems will discourage young people from pursuing technical careers. You can view the FPV talking points on their website, and I also have the link to it below this video. These are just two examples of how the drone community is speaking up. One thing is for certain, the remote ID is happening. Whether you're a hobbyist flyer or commercial pilot, it's going to change the way you fly. So it's your responsibility to speak up and share your thoughts on the NPRM. 